Welcome back. We're now on uh, Module 2. We will talk about local and global classes, class attributes and methods, and a uh, design pattern that is very well known and important, the factory method. Now, first of all, local and global classes. So far in the first uh, exercise, we've dealt with local classes, which can be defined in any source unit. So in a report, which we've done, uh, even a function module, global class, even as a subunit and so forth, and uh, the thing is that it's like a form in that way that it's only visible in that source unit. So, which means, of course, the same class name can be used in many source units and they don't conflict each with each other. And uh, by convention, typically those uh, classes start with the name. The name starts with LCL for local class. Of course, um, what's more important in a big application is, is of course, global applications that are like functions or DDIC elements or something like this, which is, it is globally visible in the system. That's how you can offer functionality to others. And um, so global classes are globally visible in the system, just like these other um, you know, elements like function modules and so forth. And of course, there's a, in a, there's a special environment to edit them, the, uh, the class builder. And um, typically, they are start the names start with CL underscore for class and not an L in front, so to indicate this is a global class. And then you use the global class just by a, you know a, the name. You declare a reference to ref to whatever. In this case here in the example below, you see a XSLT processor, CL XSLT processor. You so do create object and you can then use whatever this object offers for you. So to sh first we want to show you a demo of the SE24, which is the environment where you really um, edit and define those global classes. So here we are in the object navigator in the SE80. And uh, you can see here this uh, usual, on the left hand side, the hierarchy of um, you know objects and packages. I see here there's a package hierarchy. I have uh, workshop app of ASE as a package and some other sub packages. And here I have the package that our sample code is in, for instance. And so let's say under here, I um, can put also global classes. And for instance, we can look at some, um, if you say embedded packages, let's look for instance, DCOM, class library, classes. Here I see global classes that are, let's just look at one, um, that are defined here. And you have the class name here. You can see properties, methods, and so forth. And um, and there is some, you know, obviously methods and parameters defined. Now I want to show you how to create a class to see uh, what that is like. And so let's go here and just um, let's go here and in the embedded packages, let's just say right-click create class. So in this um, class library, you say class. Now let's give it the class name. It's CL because it's a global class. Um, Oh, oh, intro um, car. So let's make a car class, you know, as a, as a the global version of that thing that we have used in the first one. And um, we want to make it a local object so we have no trouble with transports. And so the system has created a class for me. And now you see a bunch of tabs here, properties, interfaces we come to later, and so forth, and methods. Let's start with properties. Um, sorry, attributes. I meant attributes. Properties are like uh, global properties of the class. Um, pro attributes are like you know where you store things. So we had, uh, for instance, name, and that was a um, instance attribute. What the difference is, we'll come to in a minute. Um, visibility is public. No, let's say no, no, no. Attributes should be private because we want to hide them, right? And we'll say the name is of type string, and then we'll have. Um, let's do a speed attribute also instance and um, I guess that didn't work here instance attribute and it's um, that's also private and it's supposed to be let's make it simple make it integer so now we have two private attributes and then let's say I want to define a method so first of all let's just do a very simple thing set name and um, then it asks for level. You basically everything you do in source you have to define here uh, by properties. Static me instance method. The difference we'll see in a minute. 
Um, here, visibility again, this thing is supposed to be public now because we want to be able to call it from the outside description we don't care about. Now, method, of course, needs parameters, and this is you define here. So, parameter, now we, you see here we are in the method definition, parameters, and uh, let's see, we want to define a name. So, this, the input parameter name, oh, so that is wrong, um, is, let's say, type uh, string also. Oh, wait a second, that was not what I meant. It's here you have to specify importing, and here you have to specify string. And so this thing has one parameter, and then maybe, yeah, let's go back here, and that's, that's enough. Now I have two attributes, one method. And now you see, now this class is, you, you, have, you define all elements of the class using this interface, but um, you can also look at the whole, um, the whole uh, class, basically, in a, in a different view. I want to save this now and um, activate it. I'll say Control F2, do a syntax check. Control F3, activate. Here I see that to define a class, there's a whole bunch of includes in, involved, all you can see here. And uh, this is all internal stuff you don't have to care about, but maybe you, if you see this one here, set name, for instance, a method, it's, uh, it's it shows that methods, global methods of global classes are each stored in their separate include. So anyway, I want to do this and activate that. And I have done this now. Okay. Um, so this way I can basically have defined the class and now I can use it. You can also... Okay, that was wrong click. Now um, everything you see here is defined by a, you know inside a tool environment, and that's not like the source code we were used to when we were writing uh, the class in source and local classes. This is unfortunately hidden. There is a button up here which is hidden now because of the um, res you know screen resolution is not big enough. But here, toggle source code and or source code based class builder. So if I go here, suddenly I see the source code view of this stuff that I just defined, and I see here. This is the name, class definition, public, final, create public. That is something we'll explain later. In the public section, I have a method, set name with a parameter. And then I have those two attributes in the private section, name and speed. And I said I have a method set name, but I didn't provide an implementation yet. So I can edit in both ways. I can go in here and say I'm going to uh, define an implementation. So here I should say name, which is the attribute name up there, and the parameter um, is I name, so that I should just say like this, and then I can call this activate, and there it is. So I can switch again to um, um, to the form-based view. This is this here, and there I see the set name. If I double-click on it, now you can jump to the implementation. So you see it. So basically, however you edit it, the tool you know gets it, and you can either edit global classes in a um, in the tool view or completely in um, a uh, the source code based view whatever you like better so going back here and this is the source code based view um, that's really all for now that's important so basically when we say we have to define a global class or you have to do that for your own code uh, this is how you do it at least you have to create the class through the UI here with create class and then you can work on it in source mode if you will or also using the SE24 and this concludes the SE24 demo there's of course a few other things but these are not important right now and I think it's just enough to get you started so now we're coming back to the slides and the concept discussion um, next we're going to talk about static level class level attributes what is this so far we talked about data definitions and those were called instance attributes because they exist per instance if you look at the picture on the right hand side there is for instance a, a car object that has an attribute name and that is in you know Porsche 911 and another car has a name VW bug and so forth so you can see clearly each class instance each object has its own data and of course it's separate now sometimes you want this and uh, that's why this feature is there you want data that is common to all instances of an uh, of a class and this is you can define with 
class data. Those are called class attributes. They exist only once per class. And as a simple case, for instance, you could want to say, I want to count the number of instances I created. So clearly, you cannot have this in an instance because you wouldn't know which one to count it in. And it's somehow above all instances. And that's why you define it with class data number of instances as an integer value that you increment then, for instance, at each create object. So now the next question, of course, is, well, where do I really count it? How do I guarantee that it's incremented only once per instance? I can either use a constructor, we've seen those, or a create method, which we'll come to later. So let's first look at the constructor case. Um, if we have a car, in this case, look, LCL car 3, um, we know that we have a constructor, and then here we define class data, we define this variable number of instances, type i, integer, I specify here read only, so it means that it is visible, in the public side, but it cannot be changed. So this variable can be read on the outside. I want to make it easily accessible, but it can only be written or counted up basically uh, on the inside. And then how do I do this? Well, in the constructor, which is an instance method, it's called when each time when an instance is created, I just count up the number of instances by one. So basically, um, every time an object is created, I increment this counter and I can always see how many objects were created by accessing this variable. And uh, so how do you access it? Well, you can see the, um, down here, you can see in the, as an example uh, how you would use it. So there's a few create objects. There's a variable um, LCL car, of type LCL car 3 ref2. And now you use not the instance variable, but instance variables to C3 underscore 1. You would access the instance. That's not how you use but you access static um, attributes with what we call the double arrow. So equals greater, or also static operator, it's called. And you see this at the bottom here in the right statement. So it's like class name um, equal greater, and then in this case, um, static attribute, how you access this value. So instead of a normal dash greater, which is the normal arrow, the double arrow is for um, class attributes and class methods, which we'll come to in a minute. So this is how you define data that is above all instances. Of course, now you heard it already, we also need to talk about class methods, methods that exist on class level. So um, code, of course, always exists only once, but a method that is defined on class level means and it's defined with class methods. It has no instance at all. It is not hooked up to any instance, and it has no instance, no access to instance attributes. So, um, for instance, if you look up here, you can see class methods get number of instances. Instead of making the data, uh, the class data number of instances public, you could say, no, I want a method to return this value, and this is how you would define it. And then you would use this by calling the method down here. You see it again, class name, double arrow, get number of instances. So very similar notation, class name, double arrow, and then the static element, in this case, the class, uh, the method name, the, method, the class method name, so to speak. So they're defined with class methods. Uh, the implementation is the same. You can see this is an instance method. This is a class method uh, from the syntax of the implementation here that looks the same, but you just have to know here you have no instance, uh, sorry, in the constructor, of course, you have an instance you're talking about, so all the instance attributes are there, and implicitly you're using your own. And here in a class method implementation, there's no access to instance attributes. So how do we use this, and why is this important? Well, let's assume we want to control the object instantiation and not the client. If you don't do anything special, everybody can call create an object and calls and create objects um, that uh, as much as they want. But for instance, what assume, uh, let's assume that you want to ensure somehow that, you, that each object with a given key exists only once for that key. So have some kind of a uniqueness guarantee. So that, for instance, if, if one client uh, writes something with this key into this object, another one will pick up the same object, uh, the same instance, and not get another one, which accidentally has the same name, and then you don't have data consistency or something like that. So the client always wants the same instance for a given key, but without holding the instance. Well, you have to, how do you get it? You have to ask somebody, give me the instance. And then, of course, this is a method that 
if it's not there you create it but if it's there you return the uh, the object that was created so for this kind of thing you need typically class methods and we see how this is done here um, you have a class method defined that's called get instance what this does will come to in a minute but it has an interface of uh, in, in parameters name which is kind of used as a key uh, of a type string and then uh, it returns a value type ref to lcr car 4 which is the same as here so what this does is really um, it re this is the method that does the create object really inside and now to prevent clients or you know, basically code outside of the class to write create object anyway and bypass the get instance method you specify this create private attribute on the class definition which means create is create object is forbidden except within the class implementation here so within the implementation code and this way you force everyone to use the get instance method so in the implementation you see here I just run um, in, in this case we'll make it very simple um, I always create an object and I specify the result variable this is um, sometimes maybe confusing but this is how you would just do it you create object into directly into the result variable and um, you set the name and that's it and uh, <clears throat> now of course we have not done anything about guaranteeing uniqueness yet uh, that will come later but um, this is anyway how you would use the class method and then down here in the uh, user code you see um, so let's say I have two variables of type reference to LCL car 4 and those are two different variables and I will ask this, the class class method get instance specify a key here get me an instance out comes an instance is assigned to these um, two variables and they are different so car 1 car 2 and then if you ask here get name you will get different results again car 1 and car 2 you get back so it's if you so far it's really like a complicated way of doing create object but of course this allows you to do additional stuff in the get instance method which is the really interesting case now this is then already where uh, you come in with the next uh, exercise and you need to implement a factory method to create objects and the point is you need to ensure that an object with a given ID which is essentially the key exists only once so we want that basically there's if you have an order number for instance it, it exists only once in the whole um, in, in memory for a program and it for instance if another program loads um, this order it will find the same way and if it's missing maybe it goes to the database but whoever loads it it doesn't matter everybody finds the same instance this is kind of the um, the problem of instance management and uniqueness in memory so some instructions on how to do this well first of all replace the constructor from the first example with a static class method uh, called get instance we can just keep the parameter and you create the you change the class definition to create private so that nobody can do create object directly now this of course gives you syntax errors because the create object is now forbidden and so you have to fix them by replacing the create object statements with calls to get instance you know as shown before then in the creation method you want to remember which cars were created and by the name key so what to do well typically this is the simplest implementation maybe you can think of another one um, you use a static internal table so an internal table that is stored on the st on the class level with role type string and then reference to the LCL car and so um, when you create a new one you put it in there into the table and before you create it you probably want to look if it's already existing and then returning only that instance there and so if get instance is called twice with the same key the second time you return and after any time after that really you return the existing instance that's found here in this table so um, the table holds basically the existing instances on a, in a static attributes so this is the exercise uh, have fun with it and then in a minute we'll look at uh, the results and a sample solution.